emanating from the headquarters of Sinclair World Ministries in Baker, Louisiana, reaching out to every nation, spreading the gospel throughout the world, transforming lives with the love of Jesus Christ. So God, we ask you to come into this house this morning we ask you, Lord, to fill each heart and each life with your great presence, your great love, your great acceptance. Lord, I pray for every precious person, those that are struggling, those that are hurting, those that are lost, those that are confused, Lord, those that are in situations and circumstances, adversity, trials, tribulation, adversity, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will supernaturally speak to every heart and every life in this place. Lord, that you will fill every life with your glory, with your power, and with your authority. Lord, I pray that every person in this house today and those across the world will experience you in your presence. And God, that we will never, ever, ever, come on church, be the same again. Never, ever, ever, ever. How many in this place say, I'm a friend of God. I want God in my heart. I want God in my life. Come on, give him glory. Give him praise. Come on, help me Somebody praise him. Somebody better lift up a praise in this house. Salvation belongs to our God. He sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Come on, join with the angels. Revelations chapter 12 is kind of like a intermedia chapter, chapter that actually really teaches us what takes place from the beginning of time in Genesis all the way to um, the great tribulation and uh, the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll see that. I named this message today, The Devil is Cast Down Twice. Because many people say, all right, if there's war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, and the devil was casted down to earth, how is it that he still has access to heaven? And the answer to that is, is he's actually cast down twice. And we'll take a look at that in Scripture. We understand then that, that with the first fall of the devil, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and casted them to the earth, which we understand as demons today. As we come to Genesis 131, God says everything is very good. So, so if it's very good, then how in the world did evil come into the world? Where did evil actually come from? Because God did not create evil. Next slide. 
Then we came to Genesis, then we come to Genesis chapter 3 and we hear the serpent and we saw who the serpent was in Revelation chapter 12 and he questioned God's word, God's will and he actually said to Eve, did God actually say? And then, and, and next he says, uh, if you really do eat of the tree, you will not die. In a way, he, he was telling the truth because you wouldn't die physically, but you would die spiritually. In other words, you'd be separated from the life, which life is in God. God knows that when you do eat uh, of this tree, you will be like him. You will know good and evil. And Jesus said it like this. Jesus said the devil is both a liar and a murderer even from the beginning. John 8, 44. Who is the great red dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan who deceives how much of the world? The whole world. And I gave you many, many scriptures to actually look. Jesus calls him the evil one. He calls him the ruler of this age, the prince of this world. And I give you all the scriptures that you guys can can look up. The Pharisees called the devil Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Paul, the great apostle, calls him the god of this world or this age or the prince of the power of the air. The devil we meet then in Genesis 3 is already evil. How many of you know? And we, we'll have to talk a little bit about how he became evil, how a holy angel becomes evil. Number two, he is a deceiver and a murderer already. That old serpent identifies his character as crafty. He's venomous. Old uh, brings to remembrance his first temptation and accusation in the Garden of Eden. The dragon is the devil, which means to slander. And, and if you're slandering somebody or you have some kind of ill will in your heart, some kind of malice in your heart against someone, remember the devil is a slanderer. He's one that falsely accuses. We understand Satan is a prosecutor in the courts of heaven before God right now, but soon will be cast down a second time to take his authority, that God will take his authority away from him. Not to ever accuse us ever again. That's where he's going to take his raft out on this world. That's why the scripture says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down unto you, having great raft, great anger, because he knows that his time is but for a short. Three and a half years into the great tribulation, he's going to have no more access to the heavens and therefore realize that the end is near. And he's going to pour out a vengeance upon the world like never before. Because he's desperate and it's, it's, it's coming to an end to his time. The dragon is Satan, which means adversary. The enemy of God and the enemy of God's people. The one who deceives the whole world. It means to mislead, to delude, to lead astray or deceive the world. Listen, let me tell you something. There's only one thing that protects you and that's truth. Truth comes from God. Truth is light. As long as you're walking in the truth, you can't be deceived or deluded or misled. But it's when you choose to, to, to buy a lie. It's, it's when you choose to listen to a lie. It's when you choose not to know God's word and walk in God's word. That's how you deceive. The only way you can be deceived is when you don't apply God's truth. Because the only way you're deceived is when you're not walking in the truth. It seems that the devil and demons, they left their appointed position of authority for a desire to have more power and authority. Be careful, power, hunger person. Remember, any power and authority that is not sanctioned by God is what I call illegal power and authority. Just because you, you can do it does not make it right. Because the difference in power and authority is this. Power is ability. Power is, is, is your ability to do something. And you can do anything you want to do. But in order for it to be authority, it's got to be sanctioned by God's authority. And that legalizes your ability to do it in earth. In other words, you don't do anything unless you get permission from God. You don't do anything unless you pray to God. You don't do anything unless God says it's all right to do it. And then it's legal. It legalizes your power. Are y'all? 
Everything God does is under authority. Why? Because authority flows down. Authority, the sewer doesn't run up either. It seems that the devil and demons left their appointed position of authority. And of course they've had a desire uh, to uh, have power and have authority. But the problem is, is, is it wasn't sanctioned by God. They rebelled against God. We understand Satan is a created angel who rebelled against God. So why does God tolerate Satan? Why does God tolerate evil? Why doesn't God uh, just annihilate the devil? Some people say that devil and demons have free will and that God could not influence them enough to keep them. That's a thought. Why would a perfect holy angel in God's presence suddenly hate God and suddenly choose to go against God? Why do some people choose not to love God more than they love themselves? Is God helpless? When it comes to free will? Hmm. Is there a power outside of God Himself that limits His will and rule over them? Hmm. Tricky. Does the Bible teach us that God has the right and the power to restrain, restrain Satan anytime He pleases? Is God really sovereign? Man, it's gotten quiet in here. <laughs> Crickets, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. Let's take a look. Hey, can we answer all these questions? We're going to answer them now. I'll tell you straight up, God's sovereign, God's running it. The devil ain't running nothing. And I'm going to prove that from the scripture right now. And God factors in your free will. God factors in all your craziness because he saw it before you did it. And God's got a way to get his people into the kingdom. And you better shout right there, because let me tell you something. As crazy as you are, and as selfish and greedy as you are, God still makes a way for you to make it in. Man, every time I think about the goodness of God that when I'm crazy and sinning and living and doing my own thing and selfish and greedy, God made provision for me because of his great mercy and his great love for me. We understand Satan is called the ruler of this world. I've already talked about that. I gave you a couple of scriptures. The Bible teaches us that, that the Most High is ruler over the realm of mankind and bestows it on whom He wishes, Daniel 4, 17. The Lord nullifies the counsel of the nations and He frustrates the plans of men, Psalms 33, 10. Shout somebody. <laughs> yes, Satan is the ruler of this world, but, say but, God has the final say. According to His will, his purpose and His plan. Come on now, somebody's getting excited that the Lord is in their life. Even in the deception and evil of Satan and demons everywhere in the world, yet Jesus Christ has all authority in heaven and earth. Matthew 28, 18 through, through 20. Um, Mark says that Jesus commands demons and they obey. Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The kingdom of darkness tries to use suffering to cause us to doubt God and become discouraged. Some of us trying, trying to make us quit uh, living for God. It is better if it is God's will then, the scripture says, to suffer for doing what is right than for doing what is wrong, 1 Peter 3.17. If God should will it, then the roaring lion must get permission to test me and try us. If the Lord wills, we will live and also do this and that. James 4.15 The Lord gives and the Lord takes. We call His name. Blessed is the name of the Lord. When Satan tried to prove that Job lived, he, uh, loved his family and his possessions and even his own life more than God, he asked for permission to attack Job. God said, because he's in authority, Okay, 
We'll let you prove Job's faith because I'm going to take him to another level. New levels, new devils. Behold, all that he has is in your power. But here's the boundary in attacking Job. Do not put your finger on him himself. When Satan wanted to tempt Peter and deny Jesus, he asked again for permission. Listen how it went. Jesus said to Simon Peter, he says, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith may not fail you. And when you have turned again, got it right, convert it, come back to God, strengthen your brothers. Make sure you use that experience for God's glory to help your brothers. Come on. Yeah. So then, have we answered our question? Yes, God is the governing authority of the universe. God therefore permitted Satan's fall before he had a purpose for it. God is never taken off guard. Therefore, his permission is always purposeful. Meaning that God may give the devil permission to do something to you in your life, but God's got a big purpose plan for your life. It's not for nothing. If you're going through something, God's going to use it. Because in this world, we only know then in part. If I don't understand why, then it's because I just only know in part. It's hard to understand how sin and pride entered into Satan's heart then and how uh, they rebelled against God in the presence of God and the Shekinah glory in the presence of God with all knowledge of who God is in His presence and in His power and still choose to go against God. That'll be one question I'll ask Jesus when I get there. What we do know is that God is sovereign over Satan. And he operates only by permission. But when cast down the second time, I've already said he'll lose his ability to approach God in heaven. Then Satan will only have three and a half years left on earth, as I've said. Therefore, every move of Satan is part of God's overall plan. Here's the... The, the thing I think we can take away from this service today. I can rest assured that my God is faithful. And even though I may go through something that I don't understand in this life, a bulldog eats a little baby and kills it. A terrible rape, some kind of terrible abuse that's totally unfair. Why? Why? Cancer. You hear those terrible words that you have cancer. I've heard that in my family before. Crushing words that paralyze you. I've had bad news that made my knees buckle. Just uh, took all the breath out of me. And the devil immediately wants to whisper in your ear, Where's your God? If he's so faithful, why, why are you, you don't deserve this. You're better than this. You're not loved. God don't really care about you. Your family don't care about you. Why don't you end it now? Why don't you get yourself? Why don't you take some pills? You'll feel a little bit better. Stop at that liquor store right there and it'll take the pain away from you. I'm telling you right now, that's a deceiver. That's a misleader. That's a slanderer. That's a serpent. That's a venomous snake that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God comes, Jesus comes to give you Life and life more abundantly. Even though we hear these scriptures and we know these scriptures, still our minds are being bombarded with 
with the power of suggestion that brings doubt in our minds. And when we're under it and we're going through a, a, a hardship in our life and the pain and the suffering and, and, and the craziness of life is pulling on us and our life gets confusing and it gets chaotic in our life and it's hard to keep our bearings, but, but we got to keep our bearings in the Word of God because the Word of God is an anchor to us. And when we get a hold of God's Word, He is faithful to us. And we keep reading about the faithfulness of God the goodness of God and that God is sovereign and God is in control and even though I'm going through what I'm going through some kind of way God's got a purpose behind all of this God's still in control I don't have to fret God is in control my God is still running it, devil. No matter what I'm hearing, no matter what I'm seeing, no matter what I'm going through, devil, my God is still on the throne in some kind of way. I'm going to bring glory and honor to Him. Jesus. And you know what, devil? I may have come down with cancer, and I don't know why, of course, I, I renounce that in the name of Jesus, because I'm not, just for an illustration. And I'm going to believe God for healing, devil. But if some kind of way I don't receive my healing here, I'm still going to get healed. In fact, I might get out of a bunch of this stupid stuff you're putting me through and cross over into heaven what I'm saying devil is I still win because you can't kill me because no man can take my life from me no devil can take my life from me because the life giver has given me life and even though I die physically I still will arise I will arise I will still live because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And I don't want to argue like Paul said, I'm in a strait between the two, death and life. Having a desire to go on home, to get out of all this crazy stuff, this pain, and be with the Lord. Or to hang out with you crazies and try to help y'all cross over the finish line. So, I'm, <laughs> this is a big deal for me. I'm, I'm trying to weigh it. <laughs> Come on, let me pray for you. Stand to your feet. Come on, you, give the Lord a great big shout in this place. Just say honestly, just say, Lord. I admit I have questions and I really don't understand everything I face all that me and my family go through I really don't understand it all but one thing I believe God you're a God of purpose you never do anything without our best interests at heart. Therefore, God, I trust you. No matter what we endure, as far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a great big shout. Father, I speak over all of our people today in the name of Jesus Christ. And I ask you, Lord, to encourage them and strengthen them, Father God. Lord, I pray for their faith, God, as their faith is being proven, as they walk through all kinds of things in life, Lord. I pray that you'll be with every one of our people, Father God. I pray your favor and your blessing upon all of us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Our people are blessed. Wait a minute, family. We are blessed. We're blessed going out. Blessed coming in. Everything we touch will multiply. Our God is with us. Go now.
those who strayed Come sit at the table Come taste the grace There's rest for the weary Rest that endures Earth has no sorrow That heaven can Hi, my name is Treasure Henderson and this is Brian Henderson and we're the director of Christmas Wishes. We want to support the children of our Miracle Place Church family. We know many of you are hitting on lean financial times and may possibly be displaced. We want to help you this Christmas season to give you a little something for your children. For those of you who would like to adopt a child for Christmas, each child will have their own Christmas ornament. Please pray, choose a child, give us your name so we can know that which child is taken care of and we'll give you further instructions. Thank you so much for participating in Christmas Wishes, and God bless. What are the seven tokens of the apocalypse? How free are these judgments? Hey guys, thanks so much for watching our show today. It may be that you don't know the Lord or maybe you're not where you need to be with the Lord today. I want you to pray a prayer with me and God's going to change your heart and change your life. Here's how we pray. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for every sin I've ever committed against you. I open my heart and I open my life, Lord, for you to come live in me, change me, save me, set me free by the power of the living God in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, God's doing something supernatural in your life. Find a good Bible teaching church and get involved in that church. And God's going to do something great in your life. Have a great, great day. For more information, call us at 225-775-4321. That's 225-775-4321. Or visit us online at miracleplacechurch.org.